Hey guys, so uh, I had a couple of questions recently, and it's kind of a rainy, uh, a rainy day or whatever, and cloudy and whatnot. It's going to be fine a little bit further down the road, and then it's going to get awful again. Um, but I figured I had a couple of questions recently, and I wanted to answer those. So, Mogul, you got you like always are asking questions, and uh, I want to answer those for you real quick. So, um, let me think. Got a smoky up here. Full grown is what he's called. It's called a full grown because he's a uh, he's a state trooper. So that's what that's what a, a state trooper is. Full grown. So and there he is. Anyway, um, now I'm doing like 70. It's speed limit 75. So there's, I'm perfectly fine. But anyway. On to the questions. Uh, Mogul, you asked me about Sierra England. Did like a video about comparing Sierra England to my company now and asking me about automatic transmissions. So, um, the first question you asked was, why did I leave Sierra England? Uh, so, there's not, there's not one specific reason why I did it. Uh, it just felt like the right time. And uh, the compound were basically this. Uh, I was promised I was going to be making more money. I was not making more money. I was making about the same amount that I was making at my old job with the trolley. So that was kind of pissing me off. I was making about $400, $450 a week. Um, and that kind of pissed me off. Well, then the next thing was that I would I would work three months and get a day off for every month I was, I was working or out over the road. And they gave me three, maybe I could push it to four days, maybe five when I went home, but that was three, four, or five days every, uh, you know, every three months. So I did not get home for holidays, I didn't get home for birthdays, I didn't get home for special events, I didn't get home for, uh, to see friends, you know, I, I just didn't get home to see, to do those things, to do those things or see those people, you know, and, uh, that kind of bugged me. And then the third thing was that around the time that I quit England, uh, I had started chit-chatting with a girl at home. And I thought it was going well. And uh, apparently, it was not going as well as I thought it was. But I thought it was going well. And so, I wanted to get home so that I could woo her and, you know, chase her and everything. And being out over the road was not helping me do that. Now, I have since learned that any like you should not change what you do or who you are to be you know to impress a girl. You just be who you are, and if she likes you, then she likes you, and don't worry about it. Then I need a new mount. It gets loose sometimes. But anyway, so um, any girl that loves you for you is going to love you for what who you are and what you do. So uh, that was a mistake on my part, but it was a mistake that I learned. And I had to learn it the hard way because there really wasn't anybody else to teach me the, those lessons. So, uh, anyway, so I, so I, I really left England for those three reasons, you know, and uh, and and that's pretty much that's pretty much it. Now, what about the now? How does it compare to my company now? Well, my company now gives me way more freedom. You know, if I if I don't want to touch the freight, I don't have to touch the freight. If I don't want to take a load, I don't have to take a load. If I want to go home, I go home. You know, there's no, like, there's nothing about it that, there's no, like, forced anything, you know? Like, I'm not forced to take a certain route. I'm not forced to uh, take a load if I don't want that load. You know, it, they just give me a load and they say, go here. I'm like, okay. And they generally leave me alone. And then when I do, when it is time for home time, I go home, and I'm home for three or four days. Now it's every two weeks about. That's about what it's been since I went over the road. Uh, when summer hits, next summer hits, I'll probably try to stay out over the road longer. Just because, you know, that way I can make money or whatever, keep the truck moving. But, um, you know, about every two weeks I go home, and I get, you know, four days, three, four days off. I mean, how many jobs do you know where you work two weeks, you get three, four days off? So, um, you know, it's, it's really nice. It gives me a lot of freedom. 
Uh, and that's that's way better than England did. Cause you just didn't have that kind of freedom. Really. Um, on the note of automatic transmissions, when I was at England, they did not train me on automatic transmissions. They trained me on manual transmissions. So I learned how to shift and clutch and, and everything as far as a manual was concerned. Um, the whole like endorsement for automatics and uh, you got to be trained on a manual to be able to drive a manual and it's got to show it on your license. Da, da, da. I didn't experience any of that. That all happened within the last five years. And uh, so I was one of the very last like truck drivers that just got trained how to drive a truck and it didn't matter if it was automatic or standard. Um, I would suggest, and, and this is my this is my opinion, but uh, England is all automatics. There are no standards. That's my understanding. And there are a lot of the bigger truck companies out here that are the same way. But the smaller truck companies, they can't afford, like my, my company doesn't buy new trucks. They buy used trucks. All the trucks that are used have standard transmissions. So if you end up leaving England to go to an older co to, to go to a company that has used trucks, and all they have are these things, guess what? You're kind of stuck. You either have to go back to England, or you got to go. You got to go on to like another company, Swift, Schneider, Prime, whatever. Whoever's got you know automatics, you got to find somebody with an automatic transmission. So. If I were you, what I would do is I'd find one of those guys that, like, rent my truck to take your CDL, you know, or something like that. And that way, what you, and then you can, like, you know, make sure it's a standard transmission. You know, have him, like, train you how to operate the, tra the transmission, you know, do your practicing or whatever, and then go and take the test so you can get that endorsement. And that way you can drive pretty much anything. You can drive automatic, you can drive standard, you can drive whatever. You know, um, and that will really open up your, I think that will really open up your opportunities. Because you don't want to be stuck behind an automatic. Uh, not not in this business. So, um, so then uh, the other question I got was about big guys. And the guy that asked it, I'm sorry, I, I memorized your name or tried to. And I've forgotten it since I started this video. So, and I obviously, I can't stop the video to go, like, find out what the name is. I didn't write it down. So, um, anyway. You want to know about fat guys now let's let's pause for a moment and let's address this real quick i am fat all right i don't know if you guys noticed or not but i am fat f-a-t fat okay like don't let's not i'm not gonna beat around the bush I'm not gonna pretend i'm a, like i'm fat okay so how is it for fat guys out here or like even fat girls how is it? Man, you were asking about the seats. I, my seat's wide enough. You know? Like, I'm a little wider than the seat. It's a big fucking seat. But, I, you know, I'm a little wider than the seat. But it's comfortable. You know? I've got the air ride. I go up. You know? And I sit up a little high. And, and I'm able to, like, you know, to have that nice air ride, you know, comfort or whatever. Uh, it can be a little tight passing between these two seats here. And uh, that's okay. I mean, I'm like a rat. You know, I'm... I'll squeeze fast. Just got to move the fat around a little bit. Uh, the bed, the back is, is perfectly comfortable. Uh, I mean, you're a fat guy. You're probably going to have to have, you know, more cushion in the back. Maybe like an extra, you know, like an extra um, level of, of, like, cushion, you know, or whatever. And I've got, I've got like a twin mattress back here that my boss bought from the last guy that drove the truck. So, uh, that's not really a big deal, real big deal. As far as anywhere else is concerned, I mean... You live your life in the world already. It's going to be pretty much like that. Um, you know, the showers are, are the showers, and and uh, you know, obviously booths are booths, and tables are tables, and and toilets are toilets, and you know, it's pretty much the same. So um, the main focus is going to be, you know, for you, is going to be can you climb in the truck? Can you climb in the trailer? It's two. Uh, and can you get underneath the equipment? And and that's the thing. And, and so, like, if I want to try to get up underneath the truck itself, that's pretty tight. I really can't do that. Um, so we get, you know, I get stuff checked out. But the trailer, I need to be able to get underneath the trailer and check lights. I, I had it happen last week or the week before last where there was a light that was out on the side of the trailer. It had come unplugged. 
but I got those fairings that dropped down, and I had to go to the back of the trailer and crawl underneath the fairing and go like underneath the trailer. And, you know, and I'm I'm doing the fat you know the fat guy waddle or whatever underneath the trailer trying to get there. But I got there, plugged it up, got back out. You know, it took me a little longer than with most people, but you know I did it. And that's the thing. So you got to be able to do those things. Um, the other thing is, you know, you might lose weight on the road. I lost weight, 40 pounds first time that I went out over the road. And the reason I lost 40 pounds the first time I went out over the road was because I didn't want to stop. Sierra England trucks were so slow. 62 miles an hour. And it was like, do I, do I sacrifice time to get where I want to go tonight so that I can stop and get, you know, a, a cheeseburger or whatever is offered at, at you know, different places along the, along the route or whatever. Or do I just keep going? Well, I just kept going. You know, I wouldn't I wouldn't stop and I would eat something maybe at lunchtime and I'd have like a tuna fish sandwich and some chips and I would go on down the road. And like everything's in the back, I can't reach it. There's no food up here for me to eat, you know? And and that was the way that I did it. So if you do the same thing, you may actually lose a little bit of weight. The truck I drive now is a lot faster. So if I get hungry uh, or if I need to get out and go to the bathroom, I stop and go to the bathroom, it's not a problem. And then I, you know, I'll end up maybe buying a bag of chips or maybe like, you know, <laughs> buying something, a little something to eat or whatnot. But, you know, the deal is it's it's pretty much the same out here as it is, you know, around, around town for you. The only deal is it's like, you know, get you might have a little trouble getting the sleeper. You might, you know, the seats are nice and wide. I mean... Most manufacturers know that truck drivers are fat asses. So they, they make them big enough for a fat ass. So, and that's pretty much it. Um, I can't think of any other questions that I, I was asked. So, uh, we'll leave it at that. So y'all keep the shiny side up. I'll see you down the road.